after eight long years, we are finally, finally making a video about this player and how good he really is. Because today we are talking about Columbus Blue Jackets forward Alexander Nylander and how he's revived his career in the past few weeks worth of play. I am so excited to be talking about this and I get it, you know, for the Penguins fans out there, for the Blackhawks fans, for the Sabres fans, for the fans of all the other teams that Nylander has been a part of, you can say that this is taking a shot. You can say that this is a little bit, you know, snarky, whatever, whatever, but at the end of the day, if you're a hockey fan like me, it's better to see players who are struggling start to do well than it is to hope that a guy continues to do poorly, like we've been seeing with some certain Ottawa Senators fans that can't get off Alex Dabrinkit's back. But today we are talking about Alexander Nylander because he has essentially revived his career in the best way possible with this Columbus Blue Jackets team. Nylander is 26 years old, 6'1", 192, right-handed winger center, and he was drafted 8th overall by the Sabres in 2016. I remember back in the scouting report era of this time frame, a lot of people were saying, hey, he could be better than William, he could be better than his older brother, and he may be the best Nylander out of the bunch. He was projected to go in the top-ish area of the draft. The eighth overall spot was pretty appropriate when he was selected. Take a look at the scouting reports back in the day, Nylander's game is all about skill. Blessed with exceptional hockey sense, technical skills, and overall offensive awareness, he's a very creative and shifty player with speed and soft hands. Furthermore, he has a great release, a good scoring touch, and the ability to do unexpected things with the puck. On the downside, there's some consistency issues and intensity could be better as well. Some room for improvement when it comes to his defensive game too. Now, the consistency. This has always been the problem with Alexander Nylander, because ever since he was drafted, he was alright, he was great in the OHL, was over a point per game, and the season after, he was playing in the AHL. You're wondering, okay, why is he going from the OHL to the AHL right away? Would there not be some sort of an agreement that kept him in the O? Well, I'm pretty sure it's a little bit different because Alexander Nylander would have technically been a transfer over loaned player from Sweden rather than a straight up OHL product. He didn't come through the Canadian ranks, but either way, all semantics aside, Alexander Nylander was okay in the AHL. He eventually stayed okay in the NHL. Then he got a little bit better in the AHL. And then because the Buffalo Sabres didn't really give him an opportunity, he found himself onto the Chicago Blackhawks, had 26 points in 65 games played, and then went back down to the AHL. The next few seasons he had spent in the Pittsburgh Penguins organization, where he had nine games played in 22-23, getting two points, and then five games played earlier this year, getting zero points. He was pretty good with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, though, being Roughly a point-per-game-ish caliber guy with that system, maybe just under a point per game. But the problem was, Alexander Nylander was not living up to the hype. He was not living up to any sort of the expectations that were placed upon him. He was not in any realm as good as William Nylander. He was not even worth the 8th overall selection because all these guys in 2016, you could say, there were a bunch taken after him that were so much better. Sergachev, great player. McAvoy, great player. Chitrin, great player. Fabro, good player. Lots of guys here that were taken after Alexander Nylander that proved to have had better NHL careers. So after he got sent over to Columbus, nobody could have expected that being thrusted into the lineup and given the right role would have resulted in Nylander getting 8 goals in 12 games played and 11 points in that sample. My gosh, he's starting to put it together. And if you go over to his game log, take a look at this. Previously with Pittsburgh acquired by Columbus, Nylander made his debut with the team right away, and after two games where he went pointless, he scored two points, a goal, and an assist against the Carolina Hurricanes, followed up by an assist against his old Blackhawks team, and then a hat-trick against the Vegas Golden Knights. 
Add on to that, another goal against Edmonton, another goal against Ottawa, a three-point game against the San Jose Sharks, and Alex Nylander has had multiple multi-goal games, he's had a hat trick, and he is now at a pretty good spot with the Columbus Blue Jackets in their system. Let's go over to the Blue Jackets lines and see where Nylander's being played. Yeah, so he's on the top unit with Johnny Gaudreau, he's playing with Boone Jenner, and if you go over to the power play, he also is the number one left wing on that spot as well. So, Nylander and Gaudreau. Who would have seen that coming, eh? What a great pairing that is. And if you want to talk about the response, everybody's talking about Alex Nylander. Let's talk about William Nylander's overall comments on that. Alex Nylander has 8 goals and 11 points through 11 games since getting traded. William said, I am a super proud brother. He's been battling his entire career and been given a real good chance to play and showing what he could do. I mean, I'm a super proud brother. And linked is a clip of Alexander Nylander scoring the goal against the San Jose Sharks. And this is a pretty good one, I'd say. If you go over to the Pittsburgh Penguins, though, this is kind of where I wanted to make this angle from. Because, of course, Nylander is doing well right now. But it's only been 12 games. The fact is, he had spent two and a half seasons, pretty much, in the Pittsburgh Penguins organization to very little NHL minutes and even fewer points. This is the post-made on the R Penguins sub. Nylander has seven goals in 11 games with the Blue Jackets. Is this another coaching failure from Pittsburgh? Let's go out there and read some of the replies to this. Bro is getting Blue Jackets minutes. You can't really compare that to here. But devil's advocate, if the minutes is what it took and he's better than our forwards in the same time frame, why didn't he get the minutes here? Because just about any time they tried to play him in a top six role in Pittsburgh, he looked wildly out of place and miscast. Here is the kicker from Legendary Railgun. That's still not a talent issue from Alex Nylander. At that point, it's just a role error. Mike Sullivan cannot maximize his players anymore in this system. He tries. It's not like he's a bad coach. He's just enforcing a system that doesn't work today. You don't win when your offensive players are getting defensive zone minutes by design. This is exactly the reasons why guys like McCann and Kapanen never peaked here, but did well in other systems. They got used to their value and not purely for the positional aspect. You can make Nylander a dedicated left wing. Of course it's going to fail. You're putting him on Malkin's line, and nobody on our top six makes zone entries where Nylander could use his agility to get open and stay on side. Everything's an opposite corner dump. How is anybody supposed to produce on a Malkin line reliably? It's meant to be a finishing line, yet Mike Sullivan has purposely designed it to constantly chase the puck, even when they have possession there behind the play. That was never an Alexander Nylander issue to me. And Columbus is proving that, I feel. He's going into Columbus's now first line, which now has nobody of note. Bjorkstrand's gone, Line's MIA half the time, Texas' confidence is shot, and Fantilli's just not 100% NHL ready yet. If Nylander is producing with that, where his two best forward teammates are a hot and cold Johnny Hockey and 2024 Boone Jenner, and he's putting up 11 points in 11 games, that's a Mike Sullivan issue to me. I think Nylander is quality in your middle six so long as you're using him properly, not using him as an up-and-down winger, and instead using him as a sniper and garbage collector, plus as support. No wonder he stunk with Malkin. Snipers tend to do that. And that is a really deep comment. That's such a cut, eh? Really diving into the intricacies and nuance of what Mike Sullivan expects out of his team and what snipers playing with Malkin end up looking like. I mean, you don't need to be clairvoyant to remember what happened a few years ago with Phil Kessel when him and Malkin were on the same line. It didn't really work. They didn't really mesh all too well. But Kessel playing with Carl Hagelin and Nick Benino, giving him the room to go out there and start producing offense by sniping it, hey, that worked. So maybe there is a really big conversation to be happening with the Penguins and whether or not they failed Alex Nylander, whether or not Mike Sullivan did not use this guy properly, and whether or not putting him with Evgeny Malkin actually kind of hurt his development. Here's a reply. This is a very fair and well thought out opinion and I genuinely thank you for sharing it. I feel like I learned a good bit reading it, so awesome work. I'm not going to dispute any of it, I just want to say that my point was purely in terms of refusing the notion that he did not get minutes or opportunities. He did get them. To your point, he was probably misusing those minutes. He did get those minutes though. And so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Alexander Nylander and how he's making the Penguins look so silly because he's been dominating with Columbus in a way that we've never seen him do so in the NHL in the past. He had Chicago minutes, yes, he had some 
you know, limited time in Buffalo, yes, but the Pittsburgh Penguins organization really didn't give him much in terms of NHL productivity. And he's gone out there and bested that in just a week and a bit in just a few weeks with Columbus. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Alexander Nylander, his overall development, and how good he's really been for CBJ. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.